Next up is uh, Hayley Keane. <laughs> okay, there's your slide. Ready? Yep. Okay, the Amazon rainforest is one of the most important ecosystems in the world, containing over 40% of global biodiversity, including many endemic taxa. These are taxa which are only found in this region of the world. The eastern side of the Andes is no exception to this, and study sites in this region of the Amazon rainforest are extremely scarce. They are currently situated a distance apart as wide as that between Milton Keynes and Paris, meaning a large change in vegetation could occur. It is important that we not only increase the amount of study sites we have, but that we increase our knowledge of this important region. Today I'm going to talk about the eastern Andean flank and whether it's always been such an important area in regards to its biodiversity, and whether its richness, richness being the total amount of taxa present, has always been as high as it is today. In order to do this, I'm using palynology. Now, palynology is the study of pollen grains, and these are the microscopic biological remains which are produced by plants in varying abundances. They preserve in the sediments, and they have a unique structure, which allows us to look at whether the, what the vegetation used to be like. Some examples of these can be seen on the right-hand side of the screen. Now, as part of my PhD, I'm looking at whether this important region of the Amazon has always remained forested, or whether it's reverted to grassland during times of change, such as climatic change, whether volcanic eruptions, also landscape scale change. Now, in order to look at this, I need to look at the total percentage of forest taxa present in my samples. On the screen here, we have two graphs. We have a percentage of forest taxa, represented by the green, and then the total richness represented by the grey graph. The total percentage of forest taxa and the richness graphs both have layers on them. The blue layers represent landscape scale change, in this case a river coming through the environment, and the grey layers represent uh, volcanic eruptions. Now from the percentage forest taxa graph, so the green graph, you can clearly see that during the 150,000 years spanned by my samples, that the percentage of forest taxa did not below, fall below 80% strongly suggesting it remained forested. Although the richness on the screen does have some variations in response to these drivers of change, however, the total richness, the average did not fall below, or the average was at 30. This is important as both the high percentage of forest taxa and the high richness indicate this region remained forested despite these drivers of change. This gives us an important idea about how best to protect this region in response to future drivers of change and how to conserve the important biodiversity found within it. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Hayley, questions? Question? There's only one. <laughs> At the back? Yeah. Um, climatic change is obviously a large driver, but we happen to have chosen 150,000 years that, despite volcanic eruptions and a huge river coming through the environment, has been relatively stable in the forest. There still have been changes in the richness, so the type of plant taxa which have been there have changed, but overall it's still remained as a forest. It's just maybe had slightly different taxa present within it during this time. Thank you very much. 